JDS. The strengths of the JDS, well, they started their campaign early like the Congress, but they did a very nice campaign. They did a basically almost village to village campaign and they have gotten a very good response for the Panchuratna Yatra. And um, of course, uh, Mr. H.D. Kumaraswamy, former Chief Minister, has been uh, um, spearheading this. He's leading from the front. And I've heard a lot of people say, oh, he's working alone and he's working so hard. So plus point, plus 10 points to him for that. Um, but uh, so th that is uh, uh, one uh, positive about the JDS. The second positive is that they are finally trying to expand into other regions and they're making a sincere effort at doing that. So uh, H.G. Kumar Swami has been traveling all across the state and uh, attempting to make inroads uh, in, in, uh, in the rest of the state, apart from the old Mysuru region where he has uh, some dominance in about 25 to 30 seats. Apart from that, he's trying to move his party into other parts of Karnataka and become a pan-state player. He is also tied up with the BRS and he has made it known very clearly that he is not going to ally with either the BJP or with the Congress this time. So, though it is doubtful as to whether he will get a majority, the very fact that he's positioning himself as an alternative is very, very good for H.D. Uh, Kumar Sami in the long run. So, this election, um, this is these are all of the strengths uh, that uh, the JDS has at present. The, let's come to the weaknesses. Now, the weakness, one of it is very obvious. Mr. H.D. Devagoda uh, is unwell. He is uh, very old. He is unable to campaign. So, the entire burden, the star campaigner for the party is only one man, H.D. Kumar So, <clears throat> The burden falls upon him to campaign uh, pretty much alone and to try and be the face of the party. Now, this, will it work? Will it not work? More likely not. Because we have seen many regional parties in the past who are banking on one leader and it doesn't really go very well over a period of time. So that's one negative uh, in, in my view about uh, the JDS and also the fact that the JDS does not have the kind of candidates for the rest of the state, um, like it has, it has strong men in uh, old Mysuru region, but not in the other parts of the state. But it's great; they're trying. Let them try, and uh, wish them good luck for that. Now, the uh, other issue, as far as the JDS is concerned, is that uh, <clears throat> they are still viewed as a caste-based party. So they are viewed as a Gauda party, a Vokkaliga party. So that is something that they're going to have to try really hard to shed. And uh, that's something that um, hopefully they will work harder on and induct more leaders from different communities. Um, CM Ibrahim being the president is great. It's a fantastic move. Uh, but more such people, intelligent people, people who are, who are good at communication, these kind of people need to come on board the JDS. So again, that's a long-term plan perhaps. Perhaps all of this is already there in HDK's mind. But this is, uh, um, these are basically the negatives as far as the JDS is concerned. Alright, so let's talk about the newest and youngest party on the horizon, the KRPP or the Kalyana Rajya Pragati Paksha. This uh, has been launched by a uh, former uh, uh, MP who was with the BJP, um, G. Janardhan Reddy, Gali Janardhan Reddy. Of course, uh, everybody knows about him uh, thanks to the various uh, allegations and cases against him in the um, you know iron ore mining scam in Ballari. Now, what exactly is Gali Janardhan Reddy going to do? Now, it's very difficult to actually assess his party because A, we don't know the candidates, we don't know who, where they're contesting, we have no idea, they don't have a prior track record. So, difficult to say, but let's try and, and put this in perspective. The strengths first, Gali Janardhan Reddy is very well known, especially in the Ballari and Kalyan Karnataka regions. He is, he's got a fantastic track record as for having transformed Ballari city and uh, installed, uh, you know, made good roads, uh, street lights, concrete roads, all sorts of things. So he is known to have improved the quality of life of the poor in Ballari city. And um, that's, you know, the, all those points go to him right there. The second uh, um, good thing that he has going for him is that he has a lot of money to spend, or at least people believe that he has a lot of money to spend. So there is anticipation on the ground for Gali Janardhan Reddy. People view him as a good man who is out to do good and he will even, you know, spend from his own pocket in order to get things done. This is the, these are the two main points. Now the negatives here 
are that a we don't know who his candidates are we don't know whether any prominent leaders are joining him nothing has been said so far and some of the candidates who who have been you know whose posters have been put up in some of the constituencies they're all young people nobody knows who they are so it's going to be a little tough to ride only on gali janardhan reddy and uh, we're going to have to wait and see how these candidates perform and how gjr actually projects himself also remember he is more uh, he's better known in kalyana karnataka region not so in the other parts of uh, the state people know of him but they don't know him they don't know his track record or what he has done so he's going to have to make a very very aggressive sales pitch in order to actually convince voters in other parts of the state to vote for him so that is uh, a negative on uh, his his play but janardhan reddy has if he is able to uh, win at least 5 seats 5 to 6 seats this time it's going to be very very crucial because in the event of a hung assembly gali janardhan reddy could well emerge to be a very very you know powerful uh, Uh, a man in the state assembly the other negative of course is that he's got a slew of cases against him they're all on appeal and uh, there is always the threat of those cases looming and hanging over his head so we're going to have to wait and see whose vote bank he uh, cuts into whether it's the congress's vote bank the bjp's vote bank or a little bit of both but who is going to be harder hit uh, between the congress and the bjp and i think that is going to be very crucial to watch out for in uh, this assembly election in Karnataka so there you have it we've told you all the good and the bad the ugly about uh, the bjp the J- congress jds as well as the trpp now um, it's still early days none of the candidate lists have been announced by either the bjp or the congress so a lot of uh, you know anticipation and waited breath is happening as both the parties are in huddles they are uh, attempting to you know finalize their campaigns so very interesting days ahead and we'll keep you posted on the lead do follow us thanks so much